Hello, Internet. It is Adam Malik, Aaron Aaron, and welcome back to Box Office Predictions. Today, we're going to be talking about Puss in Boots, The Final Wish. So, as usual, we're going to be going over the pros and cons. So, let's get to it. Pros. This is the sequel to Puss in Boots, a movie that came out in 2011. Yes, you heard that right. 2011. It's been that long. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. Sequel to Puss in Boots, which itself was a spinoff to Shrek, and now I can finally talk about Shrek in detail. So let's do that. So Shrek, we all know what Shrek is. It's like basically DreamWorks uh, tour de force. Like this is the cream of the crop right here. So Shrek came out in 2001. It's basically made to be a big F you to Disney. Uh, and it worked. It made a whole lot of money, got a whole lot of acclaim. So naturally, you make a sequel. And this is where things get important because Puss in Boots made his debut in the sequel. And he, and he became an instant fan favorite. And Shrek 2, I'd argue, is, is a contender for the greatest sequel ever made. <laughs> Maybe it is the greatest sequel ever made. It's definitely up there. And it's still DreamWorks' highest grossing movie. <laughs> And I, I can't imagine that's going to change any time ever. So, yeah. Then you have Shrek the Third, which unfortunately happened. And then you got Shrek Forever After, which was better. And in that movie, had, like, thick puss, puss in boots. And some people, I've actually seen, like, some posts where some people are like, wait a minute. Did Endgame rip off Shrek Forever After? And there was, like, screenshot comparisons. I was like, Wow. That's really weird. That's oddly, they're oddly similar. It's kind of like these super weird comparisons like Joker and Fred the movie, how they kind of share weirdly similar beats. I don't know how that happens, but yeah, I thought that was a little weird. But one year after the Shrek movies ended, well, at the time, we got Puss in Boots. The, and, and the thing is, Puss in Boots, I did a little bit of research before making this video. This was supposed to be a direct-to-DVD movie. That's what it was initially supposed to be. But then they were like, wait a minute. We can do more with this. Puss deserves better. So they made it a big old theatrical movie. Kind of like what happened with Toy Story 2. Similar-ish uh, situation. But Puss in Boots here... It didn't do as well as the Shrek movies. I mean, being a spinoff, it, it'd be hard for it to do as well as those. But it still did pretty well in the grand scheme of things. Maybe like a, almost 150 million domestic, 555 million worldwide. I mean, its performance was kind of nutty, though. <laughs> like, it had a weak opening weekend of like 34 million. Then it had an insane drop of, 30, of 3%. And then it... You know, fell another 25%, which pretty much saved it at the point. It was no longer labeled a bomb. And overall, made a profit. It was a success. So naturally, you know, it makes sense to make a sequel. Why it took this long, though? Well, I'll explain that later when we get to the cons. But yeah, yeah. But still, the Shrek series as a whole, a long history of success. Even with Shrek the Third, <laughs> that still made money, even though it didn't deserve to. <laughs> and yeah, so obviously Puss in Boots, the part of a big like DreamWorks' biggest franchise. So obviously being connected to the Sh to the Shrek brand, that's a pro, easy pro. Especially since Shrek is still relevant thanks to the internet and all the memes people have created <laughs> about him. So that's good too. So. Yeah, being connected to the Shrek brand, pro. Another pro is DreamWorks themselves. Well, this is kind of like a pro and a con, but we're going to talk about the pro side right now. So DreamWorks, long history of success. They've had plenty of success stories. I already mentioned Shrek. They also had, uh, let's see. Well, I guess there's Prince of Egypt, which is fantastic. Uh, I know Road to El Dorado wasn't a hit, but it's now, it's more popular now than it was when it came out. Uh, thanks again to internet memes. DreamWorks is just, 
like literally some of their movies are literally known by their internet memes. I mean, we're talking Road to El Dorado, we're talking Shrek, Shark Tale, Madagascar, <laughs> B movie especially. Uh, it's kind of Mega Mind. That's a massive one. Yeah, it's kind of weird. <laughs> But, yeah, I mean, they've had so many hits. I mean, Madagascar, Kung Fu Panda, uh, I guess Shark Tale, kind of. <laughs> um, How to Train Your Dragon is another big one. Puss in Boots is another one. Uh, Rise of the Guardians wasn't a hit, and that kind of caused DreamWorks, like, their, all, their near-death spiral <laughs> that they did survive. But... It still has a big, big following. Uh, let's see. Home did all right. Trolls became a big, you know, became its own series. So did Boss Baby. Both So Trolls and Boss Baby were both big hits, especially Boss Baby. Uh, and then recently this year, you had the bad guys do pretty decent. So, yeah, DreamWorks, they've had a lot of hits, you know, in their history. So that's a good thing, right? They've had some bombs, but I will go over when we get to the cons but for now dreamworks does have a lot of hits a lot of beloved hits so pro another pro is that competition or at least direct competition is more or less non-existent because this is literally the only family movie that's out right now i mean there was strange world but we all know what happened to that <laughs> um so it doesn't have to worry about really anything at least when it comes to direct competition. I think the next family movie coming out is God, what what is it? <laughs> I don't I don't even know. I think it's I have to check. It's not till like next year. Blah blah blah. I'm trying to find it. Where is it? Where where is it? Apparently, this movie called uh, Mummies from Warner Brothers, that's like late February. I guess that's that's supposed to be it. But I guess in terms of like major, major family movies, the next one is uh, the Super Mario Brothers movie, which is hilarious considering, you know, both Puss in Boots 2 and the Super Mario Brothers movie are both from Universal. You know, one from DreamWorks, one from Illumination, still under the Universal banner. So that's really interesting. <laughs> but. Yeah, in terms of direct competition, there is none. Which, and it won't be any for a long time. So that's great. So that's a pro. Another pro is that reviews for this movie are quite good. It's at, at this point in time, 96% on Rotten Tomatoes critic score. Our audience score is 93%, so word of mouth is a complete non-issue. <laughs> so critics, audiences are like, this is good, really good, so... No problem there. So that's a pro. Uh, what other pros can I think of? I think that's really it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Con. Well, I guess I can mention. You know, this is the Christmas season, and you know, Christmas is the most lucrative time of the year for the box office. You know, weird, wild things happen like all the time, and so. This being, you know, a family movie, a family movie around the holidays, it'll definitely benefit more than most movies. So that's a good thing. So that's a pro. And I think that's it with pros. Okay, cons. Uh, the big hurdle this movie has to deal with, at least one of them, is Avatar 2. Now, it's not direct competition, but Avatar 2 is, well, it's not even destined to be, it is. The big movie of December, and this movie is obviously going to be in its shadow. <laughs> okay, so Avatar 2 has all the attention, all the buzz, all the box office right now. And it's going to remain that way for the rest of the holidays. So, it's kind of a question that if, can this movie survive in Avatar 2's shadow? Can it do it? It has a, a good chance, but I'm not super sure <laughs> i'm not super sure if it can really thrive under avatar 2 we have to we'll have to wait and see so yeah avatar 2 dealing with that is a con but it's it can it has a chance to survive but it's still a con another con the 11 year gap between this 
and its predecessor. Now, I know for animated sequels, it's not uncommon for them to take a long time to release. I mean, look at the 11-ish year gap between Toy Story 2 and 3. The 13-year gap between Finding Nemo and Finding Dory. The 14-year gap between Incredibles and Incredibles 2. Six-year gap between Frozen and Frozen 2. Hell, the nine-year gap between Toy Story 3 and Toy Story 4. So this isn't uncommon. But the thing is, with all those movies, like, they're all, like, super-duper iconic. Like, they're... <laughs> They're like beloved by millions and millions, and millions. Many are seen as classics, but Puss in Boots, like the first movie, it's not a bad movie. Far from a bad movie, but it's kind of has this reputation of you watch it and you're like, that was good, and then you never think about it ever again. <laughs> I know that sounds mean, really mean, but that's the case for a lot of movies, even good movies, like. Like, I never, like, the first Puss in Boots was just fine, albeit not super memorable. Like, it it lacked the impact of, like, say, Shrek 1 and 2. Or even, like, Shrek 4, <laughs> for that instance. So, yeah, making a sequel, like, like so, after, like, such a long time, feels kind of weird. But there's a reason for that. And, I'll ex and the reason I'm about to explain it now. See, DreamWorks, um... Like, they announced the sequel, but during this 11-year gap, um, they had problems. Um, Rise of the Guardians, that tanking, Turbo tanking, Mr. Peabody and Sherman tanking, P Penguins of Madagascar tanking. That did a number on DreamWorks to the point where they almost died <laughs> because of all these flops. But they ultimately survived, but obviously it would put a lot of movies like on at least some of their projects on the back burner or, or just straight up canceled. But they survived that. And then like distribution wise, they went from Paramount, which was Puss in Boots original distributor. And then it went to Fox. That didn't work out too great. And now it's in, under Universal, and then the pandemic happened, and then things just a whole bunch of crap <laughs> happened, but it finally it's finally out now so but yeah a whole lot happened for us to get to this point but yeah like that 11 year gap ugh, for a movie like this i don't know if that was such a great idea i mean sure the biggest movie of the year so far top gun maverick it took like what how many years like all 36 i think 36 i'm pretty sure it was 36 it was 36. That took 36 years to come out. But um, still did stupid well. But again, Top Gun, Top Gun is considered an 80s classic. So, of course, people would be interested in a modern sequel. This, I don't know, man. <laughs> That's ugh, I, That 11-year gap is just... Ugh. I don't know. I'm just going to label the 11-year gap as a con, mainly because I don't know if it really benefits the movie at all. <laughs> I seriously doubt people were, like, jumping up and down, foaming at the mouth, waiting for Puss in Boots 2 after so many years. I, I can't see that happening. So, yeah, I'm labeling that as a con. Another con is DreamWorks, again. Their track record recently has been pretty damn spotty to say the least i mean they were doing great in the 2000s <laughs> but you know actually the whole track record is kind of spotty but once they had like shrek and like shrek 2 things were going pretty darn well for them i mean sure they had some misfires like flushed away which is a really good movie but that did terrible and it killed dreamworks relationship with ardman but um yeah things were going pretty good until Rise of the Guardians tanked. And I know it sucks because Rise of the Guardians is a really good movie, but it doesn't change the fact the movie did terrible. And it, again, caused that death spiral. That, you know, temporary death spiral. But yeah, Rise of the Guardians flopped. The Crews did really well. Turbo flopped. Mr. Peabody and Sherman flopped. How Train of Dragon 2 did good, but it definitely could have done way better. 
Penguins of Madagascar flopped. Home did all right. Kung Fu Panda 3 did decent. Trolls did decent. Boss Baby did really well. Captain Underpants did fine considering it's low budget. How to Dragon 3 did good. Abom <clears throat> Abominable just did meh. Trolls War Tour can't really comment on that because that, as we all know, that was one of the first victims of the pandemic and the universe made the decision to put that on like PVOD uh, the, the day it was supposed to release in theaters. So we can't comment on that. Crudes, Crudes 2, considering when it came out, it did it was like one of the better performers out there. Spirit of Tamed flopped. Uh, Boss Baby 2 didn't do very well. Uh, the uh, the bad guys did all right, and now we're here. So yeah, pretty spotty, <laughs> to say the least. So I'm labeling that as a con. So that's a con. Um, I think that's really it. Oh wait, Christmas the op the Christmas weekend this weekend. Oh boy, Saturday is not gonna be fun <laughs> at all. Cause guess what Saturday is. Christmas Eve. That is a death sentence for all movies. No movie is no movie does well on Christmas Eve because why would anyone go to the movies on Christmas Eve? But so yeah, Christmas Eve on a Saturday, like it's bad enough for Christmas Eve, like when it's on like a week day, but on a weekend, it's disastrous. <laughs> like it does a number on the whole weekend. You basically lost a whole day. <laughs> so. Yeah, Christmas Eve on a Saturday is going to hurt a lot. But sure, there's Christmas the day after. But the thing is, Puss in Boots 2, it won't do as well on Christmas Day as other movies. Because, you know, sure, it'll have a bit of a boost, but not a humongous boost. Because guess what? Kids are going to be at home, you know, opening their Christmas presents and dealing with those all day long. Now, the day after Christmas and the several days after that, that's when family movies shine. Uh, you know, that's when they really shine. That's when the box office really ticks up. And the same will definitely happen here. But yeah, Christmas Eve, that's going to be brutal. <laughs> so Christmas Eve on a Saturday, con. Big old con against this movie. But after that, things will be fine. So now it's time to predict. It's uh, opening weekend. Uh, Well, we have to do like a three day and a five day. I guess six day no five day. I'm just going with five day. Now, okay, we don't have preview numbers to judge this movie because you know the preview number they this movie didn't have previews. I know it had like early access screenings like in Fe in uh, November, but it didn't have like legitimate previews, so can't do anything about that. So I can't really properly judge this. <laughs> so, um. Let's see. What what comparisons do I have, though? I can't... Not too many animated movies open on Christmas. Many open way before Christmas. Like, say, with Spider-Verse. That opened a good week and a half or so before Christmas. So it's hard to compare that with this. <laughs> um, shoot. I Oh, Sing. And Sing 2. Sing 2. Let's go with Sing 2. That's a great comparison, because that came out last year right before Christmas, and it was also like a, a sequel that well it was only like five a five year gap, but still it took a little bit of time for it to come out. But yes, and then also have to deal with Christmas Eve on a weekend. This is the perfect comparison, <laughs> uh, and they're both from Universal. Fantastic. Uh, so Sing Two. That also opened on a Wednesday, which is, again, perfect comparison. So Sing 2, that made $37 million over five days and $22 million over the three-day weekend. I don't think this will do as well as that <laughs> um, because I guess that had a little more oomph, you know, with its marketing campaign with just, you know, being like the big family movie, not called No Way Home. <laughs> of you know the holiday i don't know if it'll do as well as that but i can see it open do a little i guess it will probably do a little worse 
So I'm going to say it's going to have a three-day opening between 15 and 20 and a five-day opening of 30 million. Maybe 30 to 35 million. I'm going to it's probably going to reach about 30. I'm going to I'm going to say 30 to 35 million. That's I can see it hitting within that range. So again, three actually wait, you know, three day 15 to 20. Okay, so 15 to 23 day and then 5 day 30. I'm going to stick with that. This is my new prediction. I'm sticking with it. Total, oh my god. <laughs> I I can't even try to predict that because weird things happen with movies over Christmas. Very weird things happen. Um, so it's kind of impossible for me to make a proper prediction. But I'm just gonna I'm just gonna <laughs> I'm gonna swing for the fences, just like Avatar Two. I'm gonna swing for the fences, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it's gonna end in, within the range of a hundred to. 125 i think may, may actually know what 100 to 150 somewhere in that range i can see this landing there so that's my final prediction 100 to 150 total so i imagine it'll probably do about as well as the first maybe slightly worse but it'll still do fine at the end of the day and that's puss in boots too so that's the only movie coming out on Wednesday. But we got some movies coming out on Friday, though. Those movies being Babylon, I Want to Dance with Somebody, and I don't know about Empire of Light. I'm not too sure about that one. I think I've heard Rum was like the whale going like getting like a wide release. So it's kind of confusing. But I know I'm doing Babylon and I Want to Dance with Somebody. Those are guaranteed. Absolute guarantees. The rest, I don't know. I guess you'll find out with if I make a prediction video on them or not. So yeah, stay tuned for those videos. But yeah, that's it. That's all. Uh, make sure to subscribe, like this video, leave a comment, turn notifications, share the whole drill. Want to check out more videos like this? I got pl playlists on the homepage of all previous prediction videos I made this year for all, pretty much all the major wide release movies. When it comes to animated stuff, uh, it was family movie stuff. I've done Sonic 2, I've done The Bad Guys, I've done Lightyear, Strange World, Lyle Lyle Crocodile, DC League of Super Pets, Minions 2. I think that's it. <laughs> yes, that was it. At least all the major ones. So, yeah, if you want to watch any of those prediction videos, go right ahead. There's also the Cancelled series where I go over all the movies that were supposed to come out but didn't. I covered Puss in Boots like two, like twice. I have to check. Um, I have to check which episodes those were. Okay. The first one was episode 47. I talked about that alongside the bad guys. Oh, I pressed the wrong thing. Okay, so first one was episode 47. Talked about, talked about that with the bad guys. And the next one was episode 119 where I talked about it alongside the Super Mario Brothers movie. So, yeah. Both from Universal, all from Universal. Strange. I don't know. <laughs> it's a weird coincidence. But, yeah. Those are the two episodes where I talked about Puss in Boots 2. So, if you want to watch those episodes, go right ahead. And there's also like 169 episodes. I uh, know I... I know I have to do another one because some stuff happened and I'm like, today I'm like, well, I guess I'm doing another one now. But I've now done 169 up to this point. So want to watch any of those, go right ahead, binge it all from beginning to now. I highly encourage it. So go do it. There's also box office recaps where I go over the box office results for any particular month. Um, my December recap will come out within like the first week of the new year, so stay tuned for that. But if you want to watch any of the past recap videos I've done on the channel, you can go right ahead. And yeah, that's it. That's all. I am out. Goodbye.